So then, uh, welcome uh, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, last day of the conference. My name is Marcel Kurzmann. I'm from Bosch IO. That's a subsidiary to Bosch. Um, I'm also uh, part of the Open Chain uh, Governance Board. Uh, I'm regular participant of the tooling group within the Open Chain. Um, what we have, not this is not a uh, complete list, uh, but it's just this is kind of where I was grown up in, in open source, I would say, and today I also want to show you, okay, how we um, applied really the open source principle also to our own work as the open source office within Bosch IO. Um, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but by the Walmart, our journey here, I became an open source uh, enthusiast, I can tell you. And um, so um, the from my observation over the last years, uh, this is also the principle that I see that behind that open source. And my colleagues were so nice to have made this, this little nice uh, picture out of my sketches, where I said, okay, and this is very fundamental also for, the fun, uh, for, for our com uh, companies or organizations, is to know, okay, where do I differentiate with my business, right? Because, and that, therefore I thought this, and this was for, I prepared that for Edinburgh in Scotland. So I put the whiskey in and I, now I realize, okay, here it also fits very well. Uh, that you uh, have here so refined products right at the end. So this is really where you differentiate them uh, with, your, with your business. But if you look at the raw material coming in, so it's, well, there's no bot big differentiation potentially. So you now with bio or whatever, potentially, but mo in most cases, uh, well, you all base on the same uh, raw material then. And uh, if you know this, and if you think about your own business, um, then you know, okay, well, this is where we differentiate, but where we do not differentiate, so we could potentially cooperate, right? And this is where I think this is a nice picture with these cooperatives, because also cooperatives not only joining forces, but also potentially joining budget <laughs> to do things. And it's exactly what we learned also the, in the last, in the last uh, meetings, in the last talks over this, this week. Um, so where I'm coming from, as I said, Bosch IO is a subsidiary to the Bosch. So what was the idea is, uh, yeah, this is our <laughs> marketing uh, slide. We bring I, uh, AIoT to life. So you can imagine Bosch, when we were founded over 120 years ago, under 30, I think even. Uh, so no one thought about software or uh, <laughs> IoT. And uh, so we had also uh, bright brains in our company and said, okay, we need to somehow spark this. And this is the idea of my subsidiary here, Bosch IO, where I work it, uh, so that we are the p pioneers to check out, okay, how we can do this, how we can bring IoT to life for our customers at Bosch. And um, yeah, there was also a learning curve, to be honest, and one was also the open source, and that's what I talk about also here a little bit, uh, how we did this. Um, so we, as Bosch IO, we, we provide Bosch internal services. So I'm also an internal service provider within Bosch. So I'm a consultant, um, but we also have in our team the metadata curation handling team, like, okay, license classifications. Uh, component curation, metadata curation, and a big part of it, and uh, I think there uh, you heard also a lot about, is the open source management automation, where we use ORT, for example. And uh, what is the main focus of our services, uh, or where we started with, uh, was I, our AIT uh, customers, so customers, internal Bosch customers, uh, that push this AIT within the company, and that has some special uh, requirements at that point. And also for them, they started to think about it and say, okay, well, uh, IoT, that is not one company that well, owns the internet and does everything alone, but this is also something that we need to do together. So we had already um, this idea, okay, nobody can do IoT alone. So that was our uh, point at that point, uh, at that time. And then we said, okay, we also need uh, an open source strategy and then things came together. And um, within uh, our customer, internal customer range here, I just listed also, then we started, okay, we need a kind of IoT platform. We, we learned about cloud and all those things. So that was the beginning. Um, then we now with 
automate, autonomous driving, uh, robotics, uh, also now this, our new topic, the software-defined vehicle. These are things that we cannot do alone, so we need really also to have some partners in the open source community, because it doesn't make sense to only have Bosch in one community, but it's, uh, it's much better to have a, a diverse uh, uh, community at that point. Uh, then Apertus ELISA civil infrastructure platform. This is also where we observe, okay, uh, we see a lot of redundancy potentially, where we, we uh, spend a lot of effort in the other organization, other companies, so where we'll see, see a big benefit in, in joining forces at that point, as we saw in the first uh, in the first slides. And all our customers, because we're supporting them, right? What they have in common, okay, they either there was no project yet, so we they need to p build it up, or well, they needed to to interact with existing ones. That's point one. And then IP, IP, IP. Yeah, so this is also we're, uh, well, not a, a startup company, so we, so we also own a lot of IP, so that's also very important for our company. And this was really, a, a, or still is, a, a balancing that's very challenging, but it's also very interesting. And so therefore, um, we're also happy that we have now a community of here, the OSPOCon, uh, the to-do group, and uh, as one, of these things, and I um, yeah, uh, talked about that before my talk. Uh, I will have another talk in the afternoon as a proxy of my dear colleague from Siemens, from Oliver Fent. He's unfortunately not able to uh, come to the, um, to the conference. Uh, and here we, we worked out together this to-do group guide, uh, outbound open source, where we can also go much more in detail what we learned, we put our observation also to share that with the community in case, well, you also want to start it up and you need some yeah, uh, help or, well, you want to inform yourself. And this is exactly where my, the title came from for my talk. So it's when we d observed, okay, well, our uh, poor open source uh, developers, they, they suffer from everything that we uh, had to establish for the IP checks and things like that. A lot of processes, uh, all this stuff. Uh, to make that also safe and secure for everyone, not only the company, but also our, our employees. Uh, we thought it would, might be a good idea if we feel that on our own, yeah, right? And this is exactly what we did. So we also started that as uh, a journey, and this will, uh, you will see uh, some, some extracts of that. Uh, here, a little list of the, uh, the communities I'm well actively involved in. There are more to that. Also, I didn't put the links here, so if you go to the uh, to the slides later, I put all the links at the at the end of, of my slides. I tried it out in SCAT this morning, so it seems to work, and here you just have the numbers. So as I said, grown up with OpenChain and the tooling group, uh, but now also to-do group, uh, FSF Legal Network. So this is where we thought, okay, this is really uh, a lot of assets where we can profit on, but also there's... Uh, community that we can uh, have much more benefit also in, in the collaboration than just using or contributing assets. Um, and also I thought, okay, I will put it at the list because you see also the, the software 360 antenna uh, where we see, okay, now in a journey, there's also that one sometime an end of a life cycle. So, and it's also nice now that we know, okay, yeah, we, we did it at least once. They are not only starting up things, but yeah, we ought unfortunately have to, to archive that one. Uh, but yeah, there's also some, some uh, potential in, in, in a new start. Yeah, and with, with ORT, I think we are on the, on the right track there. And this is exactly the, if you look at the, the upper right, the, the, if you remember this cooperative, so where you say, okay, here we are differentiating, here we're not differentiating. So I guess most of our companies, organizations, we, we, our com customers here, internal customers, they, they work on cloud services, applications, embedded systems. So this is where we want to be best in class as Bosch, right, and with our products. But on the left side, this is kind of the input. So we use dependencies from open source and so on. And uh, I liked this quote yesterday, uh, the tide lifts all the boats, right? It's, it's it really everyone profits from having a good and uh, cleared 
open source material. And that's just exactly the, was the idea then to join forces at that point because we said, okay, it doesn't make sense that, well, this company, this company, we, we all do the, in, reinvent the wheel more or less. So let's join forces and do that together. And uh, there also, uh, that's where I became the, the, the open source enthusiast. Really, this is really true for us, right? Sharing really creates value. And I do not talk only about the assets that you get, could get only by consuming. So also, you can consume, you're invited, uh, you're welcome to consume the material. But uh, I can tell you, and I try to transport this also here by this experience eating my own dog food, <laughs> um, to say, okay, there's also value in this collaboration, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, and that you get understand a little bit uh, how we then set up our services here internally, we really put open source at the core of our services. Um, so here we have the three teams I mentioned, so about consulting where I'm in, and the metadata uh, curation, and uh, well, also the automation team, I just put it as IT. And here I just make some collections of where we, saw, we started here and then saw, ah, here we have a need and so on. So where you see, um, I try to, to put that in also in, in, in different areas. And uh, I guess most of you that started in finding out, ah, oh, what's there, what not, um, this is also something where I see a big benefit in having an open source community because it's, there's not a lack of solutions, right? It's just uh, a huge ocean of solutions and you need to know, okay, what's the right one? So even here, uh, this is also worth sharing and that's what we also try to do here in the to-do group um, that we say, okay, if you come in as a newbie or even if you already know the stuff that we maintain this together because uh, the, I think it was yesterday or some days ago, we said, okay, well, there's material, but this is already outdated. Yeah? So then new people coming in, seeing outdated material, this is also, yeah, you iterate un un unnecessarily. And this is also value to have a community that um, maintains um, those materials. So if we go a little bit more down, I thought, okay, we'll also put that picture in here is a little bit small, but you can then also see it in the um, uh, in the slides that you also need to have an idea about your li life cycle of your processes, where to put that in. And I think here we still have, oh, it's uh, automatically <laughs> forwarding. Uh, this is where you need to know, okay, where can I also uh, use then the, uh, the assets, right? So because I know, ah, I have an asset, but what's, when's the right uh, place to, to, uh, to use it? And here this is uh, then for the infrastructure, one of our main components, this OSS Review Toolkit. My pitch is rather that's for us, as we are coming from, as I said, IoT, we have this uh, strong requirement to have this continuous integration, continuous deployment. Um, so we need that automation heavily. So that might be different for, for others, but uh, so here it's also important to know, okay, who has more or less the same problem space? And this is also in the beginning of the journey, what you will see later. Um, and as I said, it's just the peak of the iceberg here where we started. And if you go down, especially if you go to automation, uh, you see a lot of tooling, standards, etc. So this is really, uh, a huge ocean of, of solutions and we need well then um, to share and also what what's the best reference and therefore we um, yeah try to establish this also as a reference um, implementation so you can use it if you want but potentially you need to adapt it to your uh, specific um, um, environment and here some uh, examples where I, it's not uh, not a huge list, but I, I just wanted to ha show you by mere consumption of open source, you can already have uh, a lot of benefits. For example, what uh, and that's also well, what I appreciate very very much is the Open Chain curriculum, for example, uh, because there was really a valuable material in the uh, in the Open Chain uh, with multi language support, especially for Asia, that was very very helpful. And um, uh, imagine if you compare this with, I set up my own training material in my company, uh, 
Well, this is very hard, I can tell you, uh, starting it up, but maintenance is a nightmare, right? And then if you still have to translate that in several languages, and this is, I think, a very, very good example where the community uh, does much, much better than any single company can do. And then also uh, my favorite, uh, so it's, it's not known very, very, very much, I guess, but I always try to place it everywhere, but this Fostart event is so cool, such a cool idea. It, uh, because of Corona, we didn't have much events, but I really invite everyone to, to go there and also share their events because uh, um, potentially some of you had the same uh, yeah, experience. Okay, end of November, oh, Again, we, we missed uh, uh, the close of pa uh, uh, the paper dates, the CFP date uh, for the FOSTEM, and, and uh, because you're not, yeah, you're aware that well, there's the FOSTEM in February, but you're not aware of the CFP dates, and this is also very helpful to to plan and also your 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 schedule for the next year. Where are the events and so on? And also here, I think sharing is a is a very high value. Uh, and now. Yeah, this was uh, some advertising about open source in general. I think uh, I, hope I don't need to evangelize anyone here, but I want to say, uh, okay, what's, what's now our um, experience or why are we also into contribution in collaboration? And this is, I, well, it's potentially an ugly picture, but I, I hope it, it will show um, the differences on the on the lef uh, left side, you see the closed approach. Yeah, I think that's done so if you're, do that internally and and uh, well uh, maintain your own stuff um, that's another story but if you use merely use open source then I called it the the open loop right it's it's you uh, copy something you copy for example this material from the open chain training material and then you have to adapt it in within your organization that would be the 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 lower right side right because oh well, yeah you need to add this and that and this and that company specific you change you modify that stuff so you branch it and um, the point is um, if then this version one that you copied um, and and you made you modified and then the community because the community is very fast sometimes and and also is very accurate because it's several several yeah, stakeholders that work on that, then they create a next version, this version two, and then you have to merge all your changes with this new version. So if you have a very slow uh, developing community, uh, well then that might make it, but if uh, potentially you have the experience also from your communities, that might happen very, very uh, fast. And um, especially also in the training material, you, you prepared everything. And then you can start from, from scratch and then merge again and merge again. And this is exactly, a, I think, a very good example for eat your own dog food because we, we heard about this in the beginning when we started the open source office and so on. Ah, oh, okay, somehow the, the developers, they, they complain about something, right? Uh, but now if you use the material and also uh, are into embrace open chain, uh, uh, embrace open source, you use that material. Now we really, understood what, what they are talking about, right? So because you had all these uh, merge efforts. And therefore, uh, that's what I meant with, um, with upstream orientation. So we try to, and that's very important, we're, it's a journey, we're still in this. We try to really switch also to this upstream orientation so that we really try to uh, contribute back, ideally, most of the material that we use so only, as I said in the beginning, you need to be aware what is differentiating or not, but that we really uh, uh, here are always linked with this closed loop. So if we have changes, we contribute them back and can directly use from upstream. And that holds already true for ORT. So here with ORT, we really have, uh, we always take the latest also internally uh, and for the to-do material and so on. So we are still on our journey. Um, and here, this is, um, as I said, sharing uh, creates value. Uh, some examples where I see, okay, where you do not only profit from consuming, but here you have additional um, benefits. And here I have, with the FOSS events, as I already mentioned, um, one non-code uh, example, because if you 
share your events then by fostered events and uh, then per potentially you didn't think about and then there are some changes for the event timing or it switches from uh, on-site to online etc and some other, some, someone else from the community uh, knows this and, and he will share, he or she will share that, then you directly profit that then also from the updates. And this is, I think you, you don't need to be a coder for this, right? You just uh, um, put an issue and say, hey, there have a change and everyone in the community will know. And that's uh, such a brilliant uh, thing. Um, second, the, that is, uh, as I said, also one, one code. Uh, example that we had, where I, I love to have that, <laughs> so I'm grateful for Porsche to do this uh, because they made a contribution. So we had teams that also used Cocoa Pots, but um, it was not the mainstream to be honest, uh, uh, but they suffered from not having this analyzer for Cocoa Pots. And Porsche, they had some more uh, yeah, uh, stakes in that, so they, well, they contributed and, and we profited. Uh, from from this contribution, so now we have a, an extension to the auto analyzer, and also our, our teams profiting from this because this is also uh, we could have done everyone on its own close, but this is a real real benefit for everyone. Same, we now will contribute to the Python part, uh, so and everyone will will um, uh, uh, profit from that. And some general benefits, I would say, is that, and that's what I really, as I said, I became now an open source uh, enthusiast, also to have these meetings like this, uh, but also our work team meetings. Um, so you're really at, at the, 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 the most current edge of information, right? Sometimes I, I really have, once uh, I looked at the mailing list, I, had, I saw some news in the mailing list that was only in the news, in the real news <laughs> uh, a week later. So it's really, I was so astonished that I'm now in a, in a community that has uh, that uh, up-to-date information. And this could also be an, uh, a good advantage uh, compared to someone sitting in his desk in his back office, uh, not communicating with the outside. So you know, we might have really a, a information gap of, of one week because, or, or more, because you just do not know what's going on outside. And a community, I think that's the best place where you get the, the freshest and already kind of curated or pre-filtered information because they will not inform about anything, but this is your community, your domain, so they will keep you up to date and you keep them up to date, right? And so this closed loop, as I called it, uh, so you see it has direct benefits, but also those indirect benefits. And so, um, also about uh, collaborative maintenance. So I invite really everyone uh, to be part of the loop. Uh, but as I said, eat your own dog food. Um, there are also challenges, so I uh, will not hide that from you. And here I, I collected some of them because I also uh, put that in the description of my talk, so what, what we learned. Um, and now I have just collected some challenges. And one challenge is this, content formats, right? So for the coders, well, that's clear. They have their programming language, but we do not have a, well, OSPO language yet. Um, so, and even worse than also the, the formats, like the one using Office, the other one using this and that and this and that. So also we do a lot in our wiki. And then, well, hmm, how do you share this, right? And how do you close this loop? Because you might consume it, then transfer it into your wiki, into your Office documents, but then if you have changes, so it's always a, a bigger burden to, to contribute that back. And here possible countermeasures. Uh, I also try to add some, some ideas, okay? And here we already have in, in OpenChain also a, a initiative to switch to Markdown yeah, uh, in order to, uh, to be interchangeable. Uh, or if you, uh, well, if you also love coding and your spare time, also if we have then potentially little tools that do this, um, yeah, uh, transformation or rendering. So, but then please also share that, yeah, because we will all profit from that. Um, then the second point is processes. Um, that's really something we had in the code as well, in the code portion, but also here, uh, I think in the non-code uh, part is okay, now I know my internal task list and then I have the issue list in the, uh, 
in the open source community and how to sync this. So for example, yeah, oh, now um, our new feature is blocked by something in the community and this is also sometimes a nightmare to keep this tracking. And uh, so this is also a possible countermeasure so that, but you will not change that from one day to another, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so, uh, but something you need to think about. So how, if I decide for issue tracker, uh, can I use one that, that also interacts with, with the open source communities much more convenient? Then, uh, that is my real pain and, and uh, as I said, I will have this other talk in the, in the afternoon as a proxy from Oliver. Uh, you will see in the guide, I'm not an author there. Uh, you might ask well, so why he's presenting. And so I was very involved in this, but uh, I, I thought this was also very nice to, as an example, well, the colleagues were much faster than I was, full stop, right? <laughs> so when I had, uh, was, was ready with my organization, now I'm really ready to contribute to that repository. They're more, more or less done with the document. And um, so this is something where I think it's also a good, um, uh, a good point uh, and, a, and a good motivation for also for this, the, the guide itself, right? So to prepare everyone. Um, and I think there's a, a parallel to this agile uh, thing. So where you try to be always potentially shippable. Here, I would, would just extend that to be always uh, uh, potentially able to, to contribute. It's not that you have to contribute it back, but if you adapt your work to a mode that you would always be able to potentially contribute, I think then you did it. And this is uh, where, where we try to, to be at. Then uh, I think this is also into, um, uh, a little bit uh, hiding into the di direction if, with these formats. If in the left side you have something ASCII and the, on the right side binaries, right? So Office documents, so we're, uh, at least I'm not a, a coder, I'm, I'm working with Office documents as well. So hmm, that's really hard to uh, track your changes, right, with the diffs. Yeah, you could do that, potentially Word, et cetera. But for interaction, the, the left side, uh, so I'm always envy then the, uh, our coders because that's so nice. Also having then Git and, and pull requests, reviews. Uh, so this is a, is a big, big benefit in my point of view. Uh, to copy as much as possible from, from their methodolo methodology. Um, then one challenge is also the culture, because you also need to uh, change your mindset a little bit. Yeah? If you're used to from your, your work, and I'm working now 25 years at Bosch, yeah? I, to be honest, 20 years ago, I didn't think about sharing things. Uh, so I, your, your mindset is, okay, I have to do something, I have to document. But if you change that mindset, okay, to say, okay, um, I'm, I do not have to invent it from scratch. Perhaps already someone else did this, right? So that you're first, um, and I'm an engineer, <laughs> so I always want to solve that problem. So this is my first reflex. Uh, and now I really had a hard time to, to change that reflex to, okay, I need to search community where there's potentially someone with the same problem and potentially these already solved that problem so that I do not have to implement my own one but can rather invest uh, the time better in, in collaborating there. Uh, but here again, also this is the balance that you need to have because you need also in your organization the awareness for the people, okay, what's, what's differentiating and what not, right? Because everything that's not differentiating, there shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but yeah, you need to know this and you need also have to, good, to have in your organization good processes also to, to ensure this, also to secure your company, organization and ensure your, your developers and your employees. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's the last challenge and that's uh, therefore we're here, I guess. Uh, uh, the community doesn't work or it doesn't work anymore. So what happens then is, uh, while well, the material gets outdated, to old, no one cares anymore, and this starts this vicious cycle of uh, saying, hmm, okay, yeah, then I don't go there anymore. And this is what's happening. I heard that some, in some of the talks, it's like this, this consumer mentality that we have in some places. And that's what we, I think, need to change. Um, so that we also, even if it's, you don't need to, to share everything, but if you already uh, review and feedback, that might already be helpful to keep that um, uh, awake also to, to show some um, yeah, appreciation of, 
uh, to the community that, and they know, they get the feedback, okay, there's someone using my assets that could already do the, uh, do the thing. And uh, this is the Baldi, uh, I think the, the, uh, the idea be between, uh, be behind open source. Um, but then you also need to check, uh, and therefore I, I wrote, focus and invest so you cannot be everywhere, right? So, and that's, was uh, learning f for us in the beginning. So we were had really these uh, hundreds of projects, hundreds of communities where we just didn't know where to go. And then nearly every day there's another community meeting. Uh, so this is, might also be a, a problem. So therefore, my, um, I would say, if you know where you're differentiating or not, then find your com uh, community and then focus and invest there to really, um, yeah, have a, a vivid company, uh, a vivid community um, that helps you and, and where you can profit from. Uh, then the, the th third point, and therefore I added this, uh, in the life cycle one day there will be potentially also the end of, of a project. So, and then please also make a clean archiving. So not uh, uh, leave your projects there forever and, and uh, then you create a lot of, yeah, kind of um, noise <laughs> uh, in, in the material. And everyone has to iterate again and see, ah, okay, now it's outdated. And as I said, there's an ocean of solutions and of, uh, of information uh, that it makes it even harder to filter what's really relevant or not. Okay, and um, the last point I just added uh, yesterday evening when I said, okay, uh, that's really, I think, as I said, embrace open source, make that not an extra point. Because when I, I uh, think back to uh, years ago, it was really, okay, now I do my work, and now after my work I do the community stuff. Um, but if you can change your mode of working to say, okay, well, this shouldn't be extra, but the community work should be part of my work, right? I think then you also did it. And uh, here uh, I just collected that for A, B, C, D, E, F. So what would be my ideal setup? So I think I, you don't have to read it. You can uh, check it later in the slides. But if I would have that really in the office, I come to the office in the morning. Uh, I have my infrastructure that's already linked to the community. I get all the news, all the stuff. And uh, so that's really where, um, where we um, tried to, to reach that. And, and as I said, this is... This is uh, a journey. And then uh, to, as I said yesterday, I, I thought about this again, okay, what, what did I do earlier and what did I do now? And this is just a, a selection of what I, I stopped or we stopped doing uh, or still <laughs> try to stop is, for example, um, as I already said, directly starting implementing. So that's potentially not the best way, but having really a community and there's something where you potentially, even if you're very uh, nicely involved, uh, that comes for free more or less because you already get this information. Ah, and then you do not need to search, but you have the information present. Then uh, the second point is this with also the formatting, where we currently try to really switch also to Markdown, or I already started now uh, for our processes to use this BPM and um, business progress of modeling net notation as also a standard, everything standard and be ready to contribute there. Uh, then one very concrete uh, example here in the, um, uh, in the OSPOCON is this actually this, this license idea. So I still remember, okay, uh, we had this SPDX license list and then we had licenses that we detected, well, hmm, that's a pity, they're not on the list, but uh, what do we do now? So we invented our own IDs, uh, like potentially the other one <laughs> also did, and, and now we really have, now with the, uh, the, the scan code license database, uh, uh, a standardized way to, to, yeah, to provide then also um, identifiers for, for non-SPDX licenses. Then also, um, what we did in the past is really we missed this CFP date. So we said, okay, yeah, ah, yeah, we want to go to this conference. Yeah, it would be nice then also to uh, to start this and that topic. And then we looked at it and said, oh, yeah, it's too late. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, sometimes that you you if you plan and uh, the, you visit uh, so that you also uh, plan not from the when does it happen, but uh, you plan from the perspective. Okay, 
when is the last day where I can put my, uh, my papers, uh, pro uh, proposals. And uh, yeah, the, what I really, really appreciate as this copied from, from the developers is this uh, pull request reviews. Uh, so in the past, it's really okay. We had kind of ad hoc reviews or no review at all. So you just well found that sometimes. And now with having this material in this always potentially contribute Beautiful <laughs> uh, way so to contribute it to the external, so we kind of adapt this also internally, so that we have this Git-based approach where we provide uh, create new material, and then I review, for example, for my colleague, my colleague reviews my uh, pull request in Git, and that's uh, so nice. I, I can't really yeah uh, um, tell you it's 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 worth making this switch. Yeah, it's much more comfortable. Okay, so just as a summary, um, I would say my, my learning, it's, it's really a journey. Yeah? It's as we're not at the end of the journey, uh, but um, we, we learned a lot uh, over the years and, and became uh, open source enthusiasts. And um, eating this own dog food is also something that I think uh, you, you understand your customers, even if that's only an internal customer, from our perspective, um, much, much better, where we see, okay, um, what they are talking about, and then now we know, okay, yeah, okay, they have to maintain internal patch branches, they have, uh, they want to merely make a small bug fix, but uh, then we tell them, yeah, well, then you have to wait for several months and years until we, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we check the contracts for the CLAs and so on and so on. So, but that went in both directions. As we then now understood, okay, what is their problem? So we could, could also uh, find out, okay, what do we need to, uh, to tell them and, and put in the trainings. Uh, and the, I would say the, um, the outcome of this over the years is what we can talk about later than in the, in the late afternoon, in the second session in this open source guide, outbound open source guide. Yeah. Okay, as I said here, uh, if you want, here are also the links to uh, the, the reference that I use and also the, uh, the last page I made, uh, the title Inspirations. Uh, so because here uh, where you will not see that we are already actively uh, in, uh, involved, so we were rather on the consum consumer side, um, but uh, we were thinking about and, and doing this uh, journey in, in becoming also here in those cases always potentially potentially uh, contributable right uh, at that point. So I thank you very much and uh, I think I, I made it uh, in time and we still have some some time left for questions if you want. Yes. can do it the community way, we have to basically completely uh, do it on our own from scratch for this very part of the uh, project or something like that. Okay, I, I tried to summarize the question. Uh, so the question was, where is the threshold where I would say, okay, I have to do it on my own instead of going the community way? It's a very good question <laughs> uh, because, and that's a learning I didn't have on the, um, on the on the slides is that we started heavily also with open chain on uh, IP license compliance etc cetera, etc cetera. and this uh, what we are currently also work out is okay now in order to answer that question we need to be more in the business right so our main target groups are currently or in the past were the developers uh, we try to do the translator between developer and and, and lawyer and so on. Uh, but now in order to really see, okay, where is our differentiation, where uh, does it make sense, then you need a business strategy first in your company, and then you can derive an open source strategy. And this is something that is also, I think, not, nat not naturally born in the organizations. So that's something that we need to really work on and potentially that might be one topic uh, that we could uh, tackle as a community as well.
we had already a good start yesterday and uh, the to-do group meeting. <laughs> yes? Thank you for your talk. Uh, I just have a question. In terms of the intellectual property, protection of the intellectual property, how, how are you dealing with uh, in your organization? Because it's quite an important part, you know, when, you can, when a company decides to contribute to the open source world, they always need to look into this aspect. So, how do you work in terms of customizing, you know, contributing to the open source, but at the same time, those open source contributors should be able to uh, work Okay, so the question was uh, uh, how we manage uh, the IP in not only using it, but then also contributing back. I guess the question is, okay, um, patents, not only license, but patents, things like that. Yeah. Um, so this is exactly what makes this uh, whole workflow a little bit yeah, slow, <laughs> or it feels very slow, but, uh, um, and this is what I, why I love, oh, sorry, it's the last question, uh, why I love our Outboard open source guide. So this is something I think we can talk about if you have the time uh, in, the, in the other session, um, is that, um, yeah, you need to do checks, and, and this is what we compiled in this guide. So we can check this there. So thank you very much, that was the last question, and for those who want and are still there, uh, you're welcome at uh, uh, 16.50, I think. It's the time for the next, my next talk. Thank you very much.